This is KGW News at Sunrise. The guy they're looking for in this manhunt is breaking into our house right now. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, How is this happening? Yeah, it's crazy. A hunt for a man in Clackamas County ends a wild crime spree, but it's the bizarre theft in their house that had those homeowners laughing. Yeah, we're gonna lead off our news with that story here in just a moment. We're also covering this this half hour. A new earthquake ready Burnside Bridge is planned for downtown Portland, but the finished product may not be as wide as we expect it. We're gonna explain why the new bridge may only be four lanes now instead of five. Plus. The last three months I've looked at my sales have been going down. Uh, they haven't been going up, so. You know, we're trying to tighten labor and I don't want to lay off my staff. Uh, the winter season could soon hurt already struggling local restaurants even more. We're going to talk to one owner on their plan to stay afloat. Good morning. Welcome to the five o'clock hour of sunrise. Uh, a couple of days closer now to Halloween. And uh, you remember yesterday I was dressed up all morning long. Yeah, Halloween costumes yes. from Goodwill. This morning, Brenda Braxton is playing the invisible woman. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> no Brenda today. She'll be back tomorrow. Rod, what do you have for us weather -wise? Uh Warm day. You know, it's 60 in Salem, or at least it was at 4 o'clock this morning. Wow. 60. Thank you for wow. a while, by the way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Kearney. I thought that was a wow moment. I really did. All right. We have rain up in Astoria. You folks could have a wet day overall. Longview, showers passing. Could be a wet day overall. Cascades, coast rains. But from Vancouver down through Salem, we think we see a shower or two, but really lots of dry weather today. We're at 56 degrees. The reason for the rain last night was a push of warmer air. So here we go. Mid 50s out the door at the coldest. We'll call this shower chance during the day, but really a lot of dry weather. 60s at noon, mid 60s at 3 p.m. Give me a wow. 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 Thank you. Um, and then we have that dry <laughs> weekend still coming. My complete forecast, Shirley. All right, Rod, thank you. So we start with that wild crime spree in Oregon City. Police say the suspect did everything from crashing a stolen truck to breaking into a home. So the homeowners helped police catch the guy and the suspect actually gave those homeowners a reason to laugh. Catherine Cook explains what that reason was in this report. The story behind these photos is intense. Clackamas County Sheriff's deputies say the truck is stolen. The driver crashed into this garage Tuesday night during a high speed chase with police. That's after they say he fired his gun out the window at another driver who had just reported him. The driver ditched the truck. He ran into the woods of Beaver Lake Estates in Oregon City and made his way to Jessica and Paul Willie's home. He had come in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, is the good part. this is, yes, I'm sorry. You'll get why Paul is laughing in a minute. But first, the surveillance video. Police identified the suspect as 25 year old Alexis Ibarra Gomez. You can see he's only wearing shorts, no shirt, no shoes. The suspect broke in through the back of the house. But he didn't use this door. Instead, he walked over here, jumped up and grabbed the second story deck and hoisted himself over. Here's where he kicked open the door. The couple and their two girls weren't home, but they knew this guy was. I get the alarm notification on my phone. Paul called 911. For the next hour, he walked police through everything Gomez did while watching him through their security system. The guy they're looking for in this manhunt is breaking into our house right now. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, How is this happening? At one point, Gomez packed a suitcase full of the family's things, then left it behind. Meanwhile, the Clackamas County SWAT team had the house surrounded with air support overhead. Eventually, Gomez headed out the door, but not before finding something to wear. And out of anything to choose from in the home, he found my Halloween outfit, Ricky Bobby, <laughs> Talladega Nights, the full jumpsuit with the, hat. with the hat. Yes. In case you didn't get the movie reference, here you go. I'm going fast. Will Ferrell. Ricky Bobby. Takes that and my bicycle with two flat tires <laughs> and tries to escape. And uh, yeah, I don't, apparently that didn't work too well. As soon as Gomez saw police, he surrendered. He now faces multiple charges. Detectives return Paul's costume. There you go. Ricky Bobby. And there's the hat. An Oregon City uh, night. Shake and bake. That could have ended so differently. Catherine Cook, KGW News. All right, next up here on Sunrise, we have a developing story. Officials have tied the deadly shooting of an Uber driver in Northeast Portland to gang violence. The shooting happened late last year, but no one's been arrested yet. So now the FBI is offering a $15,000 reward. 
The Uber driver was, who was shot was a 23-year-old refugee from Iraq, and according to the FBI, he was shot by more than one person. They also believe he was either an unintended or mistaken target. We lost um, a good guy. He was like helping a lot of people, and he was so close to start a new family. These guns are traveling. They are moving from person to person, from shooter to shooter. And with that, of course, we are tracking those guns to the best of our ability and working with ATF and our local partners to do that. Authorities say the people involved in the shooting got into two cars afterwards. One of them was a Volkswagen. In addition to the $15,000 reward that the FBI is offering, Crime Stoppers of Oregon is also offering a $2,500 reward for information about this case. Multnomah County is working to shave upwards of $200 million off the project to build a new earthquake-ready Burnside Bridge. It would serve as a critical lifeline between the east and west side of Portland in the event of a major earthquake. Original plans included 20-foot wide protected bike pedestrian lanes on each side and five lanes of traffic. That's wider than what the current nearly 100-year-old bridge has now. But the growing price tag, now estimated close to a billion dollars, is forcing substantial cuts. And one of the ideas on the table is reducing the overall width of the bridge. The city and TriMet want to keep uh, the current bus only lane that's only in the eastbound direction. If we have four lanes, that means only three of them are available for cars and trucks. Um, so we've proposed a reversible lane. These are just proposals. You'll have a chance to weigh in in an online survey that will be open to the public starting November 15th. Well, even though a lot of people have started going out to eat again at their favorite restaurants, some local spots say they are still struggling to stay open. Yeah, Joe Ranieri found out there's yet another concern for the colder months ahead. Outdoor dining has been a lifesaver for restaurants during the pandemic, but now restaurant owners like Gabriel Pascuzzi, who owns Mama Bird in northwest Portland, know in just the next couple of weeks, many won't be asking for a table outside. Part of the problem with this summer of having outdoor dining was we were having a labor shortage. We couldn't capture all the sales that we wanted to because we didn't have enough staff. Pascuzzi, who was on Top Chef last year, has been fighting the same fight as everyone else in his industry. Our supply chain issues, we can't get to go wares half the time. We're constantly pivoting. Something's not showing up basically every day. From a labor shortage, having to close for lunch, and not being able to stay open seven days a week, he says it's tough to keep his sales and his two other restaurants running. The last three months I've looked at my sales have been going down. Uh, they haven't been going up, so, you know, we're trying to tighten labor and I don't want to lay off my staff. What will help Gabriel? The money he's still waiting for from the restaurant revitalization fund. Luckily, he was able to secure nearly a half a million dollars, but he's still waiting for it. We had just under 5,000 eligible applicants here in Oregon for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund at the federal level, a $28.6 billion fund to support our restaurants across America. That money is gone. Now officials in the restaurant business are wanting more help from the federal government. So if we can get it replenished, we're on a better track to survival as we head towards the winter months. In Northwest Portland, Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Well, supply chain problems aren't just affecting restaurants. They may impact all of us over the next couple of months when it comes to holiday shopping. The Adobe Holiday Shopping Forecast looks at 1 trillion visits to retail sites along with surveys of 400 different U.S. retailers. And with all that, they found that the discounts this year will not be as good as they've been in years past. And whether you're shopping online or going to stores, there's going to be a lot less product in stock this year. They're seeing it across the websites that they're visiting and trying to purchase goods on. We're seeing out-of-stock notification rates up 172% relative to pre-pandemic norms. Adobe also found that products most likely to be out of stock include clothing, sporting goods, baby products, and electronics. Even though they'll have these shortages, though, the company predicts online spending will be up this year. They expect it to top $200 billion during the holiday season for the first time ever. And good news for you, Rod. Yeah, yeah. You can get me the same thing you got me last year if you want. 
I'll remind you, that was a big fat nothing. <laughs> you know, I was watching the story, Drew, I thought, this is the first year in a long time I really prepared a long list, and now you're telling me I may sure. not get it. I don't believe that for a moment. Gosh darn it. All right, here we go. We shouldn't make light of that. That's really going to be a pain in the you-know-what as we get more into the holiday season. You see the fetch of moisture streaming mainly up to our north, uh, and that's where it's going to be steady, just pounding rains up in uh, northern Washington, up into British Columbia. Seattle could be fairly steady rain today. And we think in our local region, Astoria, good morning, you could have fairly steady rain today. Even up Kelso, Lombia, or you could have fairly steady rain today. Otherwise, if you're driving through the coast, range expect to have to flip on the windshield wipers if you're driving up into the cascades it could be a fairly steady mostly light rain today and also out in parts of the western gorge but already we're seeing this gap not completely, but for the most part, a lot of dry weather from Portland down into Salem. And I don't see a lot of rain for the heart of the Lama Valley until we get into this evening. So Futurecast brings our next shot of steady rain coming in either late afternoon. This is fourth or year, maybe holding off until we get into the early evening hours. But this is hours and at times pretty heavy rain coming down overnight. That was 1130. And then this is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, once the rain band that comes in later today or this evening, once that clears us tomorrow morning, then that is it. And your entire weekend still looks to be dry. And by the way, pretty good batch of rain tonight. This is 64 100 in Portland over an inch in that story where it could be raining much of the day today and then even heavier amounts once you get up into Seattle. And then the other part of the weather story, the warm temp, Salem 59 degrees right now. Portland is up to 56, so we have mostly 40 degree temperatures and even 50s in central and eastern Oregon. So mid 60s for highs today. The big story here is the rainy evening coming and then uh, southwest Washington. Remember, numerous showers once you get up into Cowlitz County, but fairly dry during the day in uh, Vancouver. Tomorrow the rain ends. We have 60 on Saturday, 58 on Sunday. The entire weekend still looks to be dry. Dry, dry. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay. Stick around for more of that. <laughs> Don't pull anything, Rudd. The Tualatin Library has a new space for makers. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the projects being created using technology like 3D printers. Plus, Squid Game, the Netflix dystopian thriller that's become a cultural phenomenon. And it's having many praising it for accurately representing these socio cultural issues in South Korea. Right after the break, our Verified team digs into the facts of the show.